Hey, how's it going? So you find me in Islington today, and Islington is one of London's many, many boroughs, but just north of Hackney, well, actually just to the west of Hackney, and what we're gonna do, Angel Tube Station is just up there, but I'm gonna walk through Islington, and I'm gonna walk down towards Hackney, which is where I live, and uh, have a quick conversation about what's going on in the world. As London opens up, I'm gonna head down the Regent's Canal. You follow this canal, actually, if you head west, you'll get all the way to Regent's Park and Regent's Park Mosque. In theory, if you were to follow the canals out of London, you could go all the way up to Birmingham and I think also Manchester. But today, we're going to walk along the canal for a little bit and just check it out. So obviously I can't, I have no camera team, so I'm just going to try and my best hold the uh, the camera so it's sort of facing the most scenic part of the canal which obviously is this side as opposed to this side which is sprawled with graffiti quick battery change always remember to use a new battery before uh, you start your vlog but as I walk along this canal let's reflect on a few things that have happened since my last few videos you might recall that one of my videos was endorsing two mayoral candidates one was uh, Lawrence Fox and the other one was Brian Rose. Lawrence Fox, uh, he did reasonably well in the election to be honest, a little bit better than I was expecting him to do. He got a number of second choice votes, but he also got a lot of first choice votes. Yes, him and along with the Liberal Democrat candidates and all of the other candidates other than then the Conservative and the Labour candidates, Sadiq Khan, who is now the elected mayor, again, sadly, Everyone lost their deposits apart from those two. It's amazing how the media sort of just sort of were dissing Lawrence Fox and the fact that, oh, he lost his deposit. Well, you didn't, you didn't talk about uh, the Liberal Democrat candidate or it was the expected thing that everyone would lose their deposit. But you know what? He put on a good show and I think he, his ambition wasn't to win the mayoral a vote. He's in it for the long game, trying to sort of change the way politics is and shout about free speech. Now, I also endorsed a candidate called Brian Rose. Now, at the time, I signed up to the volunteer program, which basically meant that I was ready to sort of hand out leaflets and pamphlets. And I'll be honest, I now regret that. I regret that, not in a bitter way, but I regret that because I produced those two videos. Um, a London you have two votes. Also the video where I was highlighting Brian Rose's manifesto and I was there for the manifesto launch. Strangely, you probably notice, none of the press were actually there. Unlike the Lawrence Fox manifesto launch, where there was a lot of press, you could see the rabble of press from my video. The Brian Rose one, there really wasn't any press. And in theory, if there had been, there would have been tough questions asked about his campaign and about what he stands for. And what was unfortunate was I was probably ill-prepared in the fact that I didn't ask all of the questions I wanted to ask. I wanted to ask about the funding for the Freedom Platform. I wanted to ask about where the money was going in regards to the Freedom Platform. I wanted to ask if any of the donations for the Freedom Platform had paid for the million pounds plus spent on his campaign. And there was a fair amount of money spent he had a campaign team, he had a lot of professional photographers, he had a lot of professional videographers. He also had boxes and boxes and boxes of leaflets, posters, stickers, everything you could possibly think of which went to trying to make for a successful campaign. He spent a lot. Billboard advertising, I mean that's not cheap. Having run as a political candidate for myself in the past, I know that it's extremely expensive and having run as a political candidate who has spent no money in the past simply because I just thought it wasn't necessary. I was only interested in being there at a hustings creating a platform. Let's try and get down here. I was trying to uh, just be there as a hustings, trying to raise awareness for the fact that we need freedom of speech, we need freedom of press. We need to stand up against the digital bill which Manderson imposed, for example, when I stood for the pirates. Uh, check out this. Anyway, this is a lovely part of the river where everyone sort of sat down, sort of having their coffees and their cakes. Highly recommended, actually. 
only disadvantages. They've endorsed the no menu policy. You have to order on your phone. It's basically a way of checking in instead of signing the book or using some ridiculous uh, Chinese communist NHS tracking system. You have to use their app and obviously that app logs who's been there. It gives your name, your email, your phone number and then suddenly everyone has your details. But anyway, I detract from the actual original point as we will continue to walk. So going back to his campaign, he um, obviously spent a lot of money. Now he obviously was probably incredibly disappointed with the amount of votes he got for the money spent. Reports suggest he spent over a million quid. Now fair play to him because he's probably in this for the long game. That's his hope anyway, at least that's what he says. He said to Londoners, he didn't win today, but he's playing the long game to change politics. Well, that may be so, but I think a lot of people that were supporting him from the, the start of his campaign might not be there as time goes by, unless he comes clean about certain things. And why am I pushing this having been a volunteer? Well, sorry. Well, because of the two videos I released, I was knocked out of the inner circle, which is a sort of core group of volunteers that were endorsing Brian and trying to sort of gather up momentum and gain support and distribute leaflets and distribute flyers. I was then told you can be part of the volunteer group. The strange thing is, on election night, just before election night, I was removed from that group for the simple fact that my last video he didn't approve of. So my last video where I showed the manifesto, I asked a few tough questions, but to be honest, they were not tough enough. They should have been a bit more specific about the Freedom Platform. They should have been a bit more specific about um, where the money's going and the fact that if he's all about freedom of speech, why does he sort of claim on videos for copyright if you feature him or why does he delete comments? on his YouTube videos and why does he turn comments off on certain videos and also why, you know, there's, there's many questions that have been asked. Either way, someone that was willing to show support by producing two videos endorsing him effectively was kicked off the campaign. Now, like the Murphys, I'm not bitter, but it does raise questions on why. Publicly, you were able to see that I made the mistake in endorsing Brian Rose, but at the same time, I'm not making this out of any sort of kickback or any sort of like business. I'm not making this video because I have an ax to grind. I'm making this video simply to sort of point out that I now regret my endorsement. I'm glad that I highlighted the manifestos of Lawrence Fox and Brian Rose. I'm glad that I covered them because effectively the, the amount of press that Eva got that was positive from the mainstream media was non-existent. Everyone was trying their best to smear Lawrence Fox from the mainstream media and everyone who bothered to engage with Brian Rose did try to smear him. But the strange thing is, the only people that really asked the tough questions in regards to does he really believe in free speech were a bunch of 15 year olds. You've deleted comments off your channel that are even vaguely, that are even vaguely against what you're yeah. doing. They're, they're yeah. saying like you- We have a, we have a social media team. Speech, which is the one thing- uh, And I'm, I, time, as, as my publicist said, I've, I've actually got a commitment, as he said, exactly. 20 minutes. He didn't do well and now He's censoring them. He's deleted their video from their channel. It's their content. He has copyright strike that video, taken it down. I'd urge you to have a look at their content. Now, I might not agree with everything these 15 year olds say in regards to the fact that they wanted him not to be talking to someone like David Icke. Uh, their criticism for him talking to David Icke was the fact that David Icke disagrees with certain parts of what happened in the Holocaust. Now he's questioned in the past if the numbers are exact. However, that's something for you to look into about David Icke, not for me to sort of delve into because it's not the appropriate time to be sort of having that topic of conversation. Maybe I'll cover that when I get a chance to go to Israel. But I'm um, talking of Israel, mainly due to the fact that we have an inept US president that clearly doesn't seem to have an interest in standing up for peace in the Middle East. The uh, Hamas leaders now, taken upon themselves to sort of fire off hundreds and hundreds of rockets and cause the Palestinians to riot against the Israelis. Now there's, a, there's right and wrong on both sides. I'm not going to sort of side with either, but it's a shocking situation what's going on. Uh, before I go too far, I'm going to head up here, moving off, away from the canal. We're going to move up across the river, moving away from this sort of beautiful scenic path and uh, heading towards what is effectively Hackney now. So we've left 
Islington behind, I think, and we suddenly find ourselves in Hackney. And as we head towards these, some would say, interesting skyscrapers, some would say incredibly ugly skyscrapers in the distance, that's where we'll be heading. What you find about this area, because most of it was uh, toppled by the Luftwaffe in the um, Second World War, they've had to rebuild pretty much from the 1950s onwards. So what generally happened was a lot of terrible properties were put up, then they were knocked down again. For example, this place here, I think there were some really dodgy properties that went up and then they got knocked down and then a modern building got put up again. Some of the original properties remain. And that's kind of the theme about most of Hackney and Islington, because I think we're sort of borderline Islington Hackney right now. From, you know, properties built in probably the 70s, 80s, to properties built in the noughties, 2010s. And then these ones remain. These remain from the Edwardian period. These are the ones that didn't suffer from the blast of the Luftwaffe. But what would have been obvious if you were living back then, you could be looking out of that window, and then your neighbours across the street would have been completely demolished. And that's generally what happened a lot around here. So as we continue onwards, I'm going to be soon hopefully leaving the country. But it all is rather dependent on how easy and accessible PCR tests are. Now, as of May 17th, you would have seen from my last video, people can leave the country to go to countries for leisure. However, there are restrictions. If it's a green country, and there's only 12 of them so far, hang on, let's stop the wind. I've got to get myself a better camera. Every time the wind picks up, there's this massive interruption, which I know, because if I can hear the wind in my ears, I know that you're hearing muffled effects of the wind and the camera. And I know that doesn't make for good viewing. People are more likely to switch off a YouTube video if the sound is poor than if the picture was terrible. You could broadcast in 480p and have HD quality sound. If you have 8K quality video, the most you're gonna get on this is 4K, but if you have 8K quality video and muffled sound, it doesn't matter how beautiful images are or how good the content is, if the sound is terrible, people are gonna switch off. But anyway, reverting back to PCR tests and the fact that we have become indoctrinated to believe that the way out of this is to sign up for the vaccine passport. And sadly, as of May 17th, as predicted, the British government are pushing ahead with the vaccine passports. Now the NHS health data, the NHS track and trace app, which is effectively the Chicom social credit system in disguise, will be linked to your data. So upon arrival in European Union countries and probably other countries around the world that sign up to this, you'll be able to present your NHS track and trace app and show, look, I've injected poison into my veins and I, I wasn't one of the many thousands that have died as a consequence. I'm still here, so can you let me into the country? And this is what we said all along. If you remember back in March 2020 and in some of my videos since then, you'll remember me saying that this is all about the vaccine passport. This is all about bringing us, conditioning us and wearing us down. The lockdowns were there to wear us down, so we'd accept the vaccine. If we imagine if you had no lockdown, then people would be like, well, I don't really need to get the vaccine. But because we had the lockdown, and we had more than one lockdown, I think, what well, were we on? Three lockdowns in the UK, four lockdowns maybe? I lost count because they all blurred into one, one ridiculous thing after another. What you'll now find is the CDC, as of May 1st, 2021, will be changing their, what counts as a, positive COVID test. They will only record people with COVID if they've been hospitalized or basically killed by COVID. Now imagine they did this from day one or did this once uh, COVID was seen as a non-risky disease. They would have, um, as I speak over this guy, there, there would have been no pandemic. There would have been no excess figures and we would have got on with our lives. But because they're rolling out the vaccines and they're, they're gonna, suddenly the figures are gonna drop dramatically because of the way they measure these things, that's May 1st. 
and everyone's going to think it's a miracle and they're going to put it down to the vaccines, they're going to put it down to the fact that social distancing worked. But just remember, there's still a PSYOP going on. The PSYOP is the fact that all of these variants that you keep hearing about will be the excuse come winter 2021 and early 2022, expect lockdowns. Now, I really hope I'm wrong about this, but I'm convinced that the so-called Indian variants and the so-called whatever variants they come up with next will be used as an excuse for the reason people start dying. Now, in every flu season, people start dying. There's a normal curve in every flu season. It happens again and again. But the difference between 2020 and 2018 was the fact that everyone was being labelled as a COVID uh, victim as opposed to just flu, bronchitis, pneumonia. Standard. The flu curve will be labelled as a COVID curve. Um, look, this is sad. This is really sad. The William the Force. This used to be an amazing pub. This is now being looked after by guardians. Living guardians are people that they pay rent to this company. To be honest, they pay fairly excessive rent just for the privilege of living in, a, in what is normally a dusty premises, just to sort of keep it away from squatters, keep people away from robbing it. If you're interested in this amazing pub, and this used to be one of the best pubs in the area, call that number. I hope it comes back and I hope it's not turned into apartments because this is a fabulous pub. It's a shame. This is the impact of what COVID has done to our economy. This is the impact of it all. But hopefully an entrepreneur will bring that back and hopefully they won't then get decimated when things lock down in the, in the following winter. And that's the thing, without knowing if there really will be a lockdown in the winter of 2021 and early 2022, would anyone in their right mind, unless you're some massive company with millions to burn, would anyone in their right mind be investing in a pub right now? Yes, you're going to have a pickup in business um, over the next few months. Is supposedly in June, clubs and everything come back into action, and hopefully social distancing goes out the window. But if predictions are right and these strains are used against us, and they push for further vaccines, and there's a prediction that they probably will because the UK government, I think, has bought something like 360 to 400 million units of vaccines. We have a population of just under 70 million. Now, granted, everyone takes two vaccines. So if you're doing the AstraZeneca, you're doing the Pfizer's, you're doing the Moderna's, Johnson & Johnson's, you're taking two. You're, take, you're taking your first shot and then something between like six to 12 weeks later, depending on which country you're in, you'll get your second shot. In theory, that's only 140 million vaccines. So why has the British government ordered something close to 400 million vaccines? I don't know the exact figure, but I think it's between 350 and 400. That's a hell of a lot of excess vaccines. Spending British taxpayers' money and giving all those vaccines to the poorer countries of the world? I don't think so. I think what's probably what's going to happen, we will have the population that had the vaccines queuing up for the vaccines at the start will be effectively at the start they would have taken their vaccines but as of 20 the winter of 2021 they'll be told right there's a new strain you need a booster shot you need to take some more vaccines and if this who knows what is going to be added to these vaccines with the mRNA technology the RNA technology we know that the AstraZeneca's have killed over a thousand people so far and we know the mRNA ones are potentially damaging your fertility. We know that the mRNA ones could be potentially doing something far greater to you in the long term. But the reality is because testing doesn't end short term until 2023, we really don't know. And here, here once again is one of London's finest hubs. This is the Eagle, famous for the, the rhyme, Pop Goes the Weasel. They've even got it up there, up and down the city road, in and out the Eagle. That's the way the money goes. Pop goes the weasel. This is a fantastic club under normal times, and I'm looking forward to the fact that when we can return to normal. The thing is, normal won't be normal. When the pub doors finally open, you're gonna go into the pub, you're gonna to have to do this sort of NHS scan. You're gonna to have to sort of do the, the malarkey with the social distancing. 
you'll have to walk in and wear the ridiculous face nappy for the first two meters. You will then be able to take your face nappy off two meters away at, when you sit down at the table. You'll then not have a real menu or you won't be able to stand by the bar. You will be ordering from the app on your phone and the personal service goes out the window. Probably a reduction in the need of people employed at these pubs and premises. The automation that Klaus Schwab has been talking about in regards to the Great Reset will be happening at a faster and faster pace as we realize there will be less need for waiters, there will be less need for servers, there will be less need for anything because effectively if you can scan your, you can scan for the menu and they do this everywhere with the track and trace and they, it's all about keeping track of the population, knowing where you are at all times effectively embracing the Chinese communist situation. <sighs> Casualty, you might remember from my Gatwick video, the Jamie Oliver restaurant in Gatwick, that was his original restaurant down there. That was the 15 restaurant and now it's gone. His entire empire is gone. A lot of jobs lost there, but he's still doing okay. But as I get to this incredibly busy road, this is the city road, by the way. And if you head down here, you get to the Old Street Roundabout and you head a little bit further, you get to the city of London. I'm going to stop here because I'm close to home. And uh, I'm going to wish you good well. And hopefully, hopefully the next video, we're going to see a little bit more. I don't know, I'm hoping I'll be in a different country. Let's see what happens. So until next time, see you in the next video.